Good morning, I'm Corey Anderson, and we're here in Andover, South Dakota, and we're firing up the 150 case. The 150 case road locomotive was originally built in 1905 by the case company, and they built nine of these engines. None of them survived the test of time. They were all scrapped, and in 2018, we built and brought one back to life from scratch, building it to the original blueprints that I acquired from the case company in Racine, Wisconsin. And so over the course of about 10 years and a lot of friends and casting all the parts and fabricating all the steel, we brought this engine back to life. And today we're gonna show you the process of firing it up, getting ready to go, and we're gonna plow this afternoon. So welcome on the journey. Here we have the, the most important part, the cleaning crew. Allie and Gretchen are wiping things down, getting everything nice and shiny so we can put on a good show today. One of the first things that we do right away in the morning when we fire up the steam engine is we have to clean the tubes. The tubes bring the heat and the smoke from the firebox in the back of the boiler. They pass through these two inch tubes and then the smoke and the, the heat exhausts out the smokestack. And so over the course of the day, with all the burning coal and wood, these tubes will build up a little bit of a soot and a film. And so what we got to do in the morning is punch the tubes and clean them all out. And so my brother Scott is punching the tubes right now. And it's a, it's a long process. The first thing we do with the boiler is we fill it with water. And so there's, there's six hand holes and these are clean out washout areas that are in the boiler. So these, these little hand holes have a gasket. And so we put all these hand holes in that closes up the, the boiler. And we're running 180 pounds per square inch of steam pressure on this. So everything has to be sealed up very well um, to hold that pressure. And so we can see our water level once we fill it. There's a water glass right here. And so this, this water glass you can see we're, we're just about an inch from the top. So the boiler is pretty much full, full of water. And you can shut these, you can close these off in the event that the glass might break. Um, and then there's, there's some tricocks that you can also tell your water level from if you have a failure of the, of the glass itself. So keeping an eye on um, your water level and knowing where your water is at is the single most important thing when it comes to running a steam engine because Maintaining that water level so that it's above the crown sheet is critical to, to operating the boiler and generating the steam and to not have, a, not have an accident or an explosion which can happen if, if the water level drops below the crown sheet. Now we're going to start lighting the fire. And so the firebox in this engine is about five feet long. And so that's a pretty, pretty deep firebox. This engine has 500 square feet of uh, heating surface in the firebox. So the next step will be we'll, we'll throw the wood in, we'll start it off, and then once we get running and a good fire going, then we'll switch it over and we'll start burning coal. And that's when we do the plowing and heavy pulling, we burn the coal for the higher BTUs. So once we get the firebox full, we put a little bit of small kindling, um, small stuff to get the fire going, and then, and then we just light her off little diesel fuel and a rag helps. Where I'm standing right now is actually the fireman's platform. This engine was designed for doing heavy freighting, road locomotive work, plowing, and so this, this engine took two, two operators. There were the firemen here, and then the engineer sat up here and, and drove the engine. And so we're on the fireman's platform and each one of these, you can see on the side here, are coal bunkers. This was designed for doing freighting over long distances, so they designed this engine with a lot of capacity for water and, and coal. So we got our coal bunkers here and then directly under where I'm standing is our water tank. So this water tank holds 650 gallons of water and so this is where we utilize our steam injectors and we take water from the water tank and we put it into the boiler utilizing the steam pressure from the boiler.
This engine was designed as a road locomotive. So the case company designed this engine for doing heavy freighting. So that meant they were pulling large loads over a long distance. And so they actually designed this to be two speed. Most steam engines are designed around the walking speed of a horse. But this engine will run five and a half miles an hour in high gear. And how they achieved that uh, two speed was they designed an auxiliary transmission. So here we have a direct, we have a direct uh, power from the crankshaft that goes through the clutch, which when the clutch is engaged, the flywheel and the clutch are engaged, we would be in high gear. And that would put power directly from the crankshaft to the intermediate gear. And we'd go five and a half miles an hour max top speed. But in low gear, we actually disengage the clutch and we slide, we slide the shifting lever over, which engages the power. Instead of going through the, the crankshaft pinion, the power goes through this auxiliary transmission. So the power goes from the first gear on the crankshaft up ahead through the auxiliary, and then it comes back down through the crankshaft pinion, which in turn acts as an intermediate gear, and then through the first intermediate gear into the differential. And that's, that reduces the speed about half. So in low gear, we're running two and a quarter miles an hour, which is ideal uh, what you want to be going for, for doing plowing. So it's pretty innovative, the technology that they developed at the turn of the century in 1900, 1905, because I mean, this is power steering, uh, additional transmissions, and none of this stuff really existed at the time. You know, they were doing all their work with horses up until roughly 1900. So this is the first really mechanical means of doing a lot of work, which allowed them to perform a lot more work a lot faster. So the steam comes up through the steam dome, through our primary steam dome valve. So in order to shut the steam completely off to the engine, we close that main valve, and then there's no power, no steam going to the engine. But once we open that main valve, the, the next valve is the throttle valve. So then we allow the steam from the throttle into the governor. And the governor is the unit with the balls turning. So if you've heard of the term balls out, that, that came from the governors back in the day with the balls. You were going max RPM when the balls were out. So if you were gonna really give her, you'd, you'd have your, the balls would be out. And, and that, that is driven by the crankshaft by this belt. So the faster the crankshaft and the engine RPM is, the faster it turns that governor, and when the balls come out, it closes the steam valve that shuts steam off to the engine. 